Project management concepts may seem tough at times, but not to worry. You have a coach who makes it as easy as ABC. Here he is to set things straight for you, your friend Phil. Hello my friends, welcome to our quick drill today. I'm gonna to tackle a topic that a student has brought up and it's the topic of quantitative versus qualitative risk analysis. So when we talk about qualitative risk analysis, how is it different from quantitative? That is the question, okay? So when you think about qualitative risk analysis, what you are aspiring to do here is different from what you're trying to do in quantitative. In qualitative, you're trying to prioritize. That is your major goal. You're trying to prioritize the risks. You're also going to categorize the risks. Primarily. Now, how do we go about the prioritization of the risks? Let's take a closer look at this. So to prioritize risks, you're going to use a simple concept of scoring. And when we say scoring the risks, what exactly do we mean? Let's dig into this a little bit more. When we talk about scoring the risks, we talk about a probability rating. And the probability rating could be, say, on a scale of 1 to 5. We talk about an impact rating. And let's say the impact rating was on a scale of, let's make it 1 to 5 to make it simple, even though in the real world the impact could be rated differently, like 1 to 10 or 1 to 8. But the bottom line is you got two ratings, probability rating and impact rating. These ratings mean nothing on other projects. So if on my project I say a risk is a four probability, for example, let's take a look at that example, four probability, and let's say an, on an impact I say it's a three. Okay, we're going to multiply these, and this is going to give us the risk score. And the risk score is 12. This 12 is not quantitative, my friends. There's a misconception that because it has numbers, it's quantitative. No, it's not quantitative. It does not convert over to other projects. It doesn't mean anything on other projects. But for our project, it helps us with the relative ranking of risks. So if we have one that's a 16, one that's a 12, one that's a 14, one that's a 10, one that's an 8, we can rearrange the risks. You get it? Rank the risks. So the 16 stays at the top, the 14 goes next, then the 12, then the 10, then the 8, and so on. You use this to order risks, okay? It's used for ranking. Now let's open up our PMBOK guide because this misconception has been around for a long time and I, I, I do want to help any of our friends who's, who are struggling with this to overcome this barrier. So let's read what exactly we are doing in qualitative. Let's go to PMBOK guide. We're in 11.3 and on page 419. Okay, let's read page 419. It says, Perform qualitative risk analysis is the process of prioritizing individual project risks for further analysis. You get that? Further analysis. That further analysis is what we will do in the other processes such as quantitative. Perform quantitative risk analysis, plan risk responses, and so on. See? The key benefit of this process is that it focuses on high priority risks. See that? Okay. Let's go a step further and let's go to the actual tools and techniques that are used to do this. All right, so on page 425, we see the breakdown, okay? It says, probability and impact. A probability and impact matrix is a grid for mapping the probability of each risk occurrence and its impact on project objectives. So you're using your probability and impact matrix 
to find using that matrix sometimes a score you know by tracing what is probability what is impact and the intersection of them okay now that is what you do in qualitative in quantitative so zoom into quantitative it's a different story in quantitative all right so let's take a closer look at what exactly we do in quantitative risk analysis so in quantitative risk analysis again we have another concept but we want to find the aggregate effect of risks on the project okay and in order to do that we'll talk about the expected monetary value EMV now EMV should not be confused with scoring risks is it similar it is but it's not the same thing for EMV we are using what I would call the absolute probability probability in percent and we'll be using the impact the impact is not going to be just any old number the impact is either going to be in dollars or it's going to be in resource hours or some other quantitative measure this is the major distinguishing factor between a risk score which is just some numbers on a scale versus EMV expected monetary value which we also refer to as a risk magnitude if you will we also refer to this as the risk magnitude however you want to spin it it's very clear there's a difference between numbers on a scale versus an absolute dollar amount or an absolute resource hour amount or absolute probability combined with it so when you take a look at this you're going to get your probability in percent and let's say it's 90 percent 90 percent is 0 0.9 right the impact in dollars let's say the impact in dollars is 400 well the EMV is going to be the product of both probability times impact in dollars and that will give you 30 360 dollars and that will be your EMV very different as you can see from a risk score so what is the purpose of quantitative risk analysis let's dive a little bit deeper because when you understand what you're doing it becomes clearer right and that's why we've got all these fancy tools in quantitative and it's it's the one that PMI tells you is the optional step see it says perform quantitative risk analysis is the process of numerically analyzing the combined effect of identified individual project risks and other sources of uncertainty on overall project objectives <clears throat> the key benefit of this process is that it quantifies overall project risk exposure quantifies it's a powerful word it's not just thrown out for multiplying random numbers on a scale no it is used with this in mind probability and impact in dollars and absolute probability in percent you see that and if you take a look at the tools that we use here they're very numeric they're very very specific to dollars percentages absolutes no scales none of that take a look at page 433 you see that example s curve from quantitative cost risk analysis that's what we're trying to do we're looking for hard dollar numbers that we can plug in and do our analysis with we're using probability distributions it is very realistic and intentional it is not qualitative then you can take a look at page 435 where we've got the example of the decision tree and that should really drive it home that when you're taking a look at page 435 and that example what you are seeing there is quantitative risk analysis that's it you're using your decision tree you're using probability and impact EMV okay contrary to what a lot of people think let me just spell it out the P 
times I matrix is for qualitative, qualitative risk analysis, not quantitative, okay? I know there's a misconception, but until you begin to read the details, you will not get the facts, okay? Read the details and it will become very clear, okay? And in closing, my friends, I just want to give you all my very best. I know many of you are burning the midnight oil. You want to get this thing done. You want to get certified. Keep going. Before you know it, you're going to get to the finish line. You're going to enjoy your success. And that is exactly what I'm looking forward to, okay? You take care now. Bye.